Good morning. My name is Keith Byram, and I'm with the Somerset Baptist Church. And we are preparing a series of Sunday school lessons for those who are unable to attend during this difficult time. So we have been studying the book of Genesis, and we've read through and studied chapter one and chapter two. And today we're gonna to study chapter three. But before we begin, please join me in a prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to learn about you and to read your word. And we pray that we will understand it and you'll open our hearts and minds so that we can take this knowledge and use it in our lives and also teach others how to know you, what you want us to do, and to teach others so that they might also learn Jesus is Lord and Savior. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to begin with what is called the fall of man. Let me read the first sentence and we'll discuss it a little bit. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the other wild animals the Lord had made. Well, I'm sure that you've studied this before and we talked about the snake in the garden. And many people think that the serpent was Satan. But there's also an argument that it wasn't Satan. And there's two parts to the argument. The first one is, why would God put Satan in the garden? The garden was a place that God went to and he walked around it. He was part of uh, what was taking place there. Why would he put uh, Satan there with him? The second thing is, is it's certainly possible that Satan, uh, I mean, excuse me, the serpent was just an animal, just like it says, an animal who happened to be crafty, uh, craftier than every other animal, and that Satan was using the serpent to for his purposes to trick other people into giving up uh, holiness and uh, being sinful. So Satan is in the garden, and he says to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Well, let's, let's stop just for a second. As we look at this, even before Eve answers, we know that Satan is lying about what God said. And Satan lies about what God says all the time. Let's see what God really said about it. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden. Free to eat it. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. So he didn't say that, that uh, he couldn't eat from any tree. He said he could, they could eat. He just couldn't eat from that particular tree. And then when he says, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? He's kind of saying like, would God really, really prevent you from eating the, in that garden? Because you see, that's the way Satan does with sin and us. Is it really a sin? Is it really that bad? Let's go on. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. So she knows that it's sinful. She knows she shouldn't do it. She said she knows that you could die from it. 
The woman said, you may eat from the, gar from the trees of the garden. So it completely contradicts of what Satan said. You will not surely die, the certain said, serpent said. Well, that's interesting. Uh, you will not surely die. You might die, but you might not surely die. He goes on. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, again. The, the serpent, speaking for Sir Satan, is trying to show, well, look, God didn't really mean that. It's not really a sin, and that's something that happens in our life all the time. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and was desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it, and ate it. So what did she see? She saw that it was good. She saw that it was pleasing to the eye. And she saw that it was desirable. Well, that's what God does with sin. And it really doesn't matter what kind of sin we're talking about. Satan disguises it as good and desirable. Think about sinful situations and sin taking place in the world. It may be desirable, but it's not good. She also gave, she also, so she took some of it and ate it, seeing that it was desirable. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. You would think, well, he doesn't have any excuse. He knows what God said. He could have stopped her from eating it, but he didn't. Then the eyes of both, and after he ate it, then the eyes of both were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they realized immediately when they had sinned that they had sinned regardless of how good it is. And isn't that the way it is with us as well? We see it, we try it, and then we realize it's wrong. No matter what others say, quite frankly, the world is always trying to convince us that sin is not really that bad, that other people do it and nothing happens to them. And you really don't have to worry about God because he's kind and merciful and he's really not going to cause you to die. And you don't see people dying who are committing sin. It's all a trick that sir, Satan does. So they said, uh, then the eyes of them were open. They realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and make coverings for themselves. I've wondered ever since I was a little kid, what good do those fig leaves do? I mean, how can you sow a fig leaf? Well, again, that's kind of what we do with sin. We try to cover it up. We try to act like it didn't happen. We will lie and say we didn't do it. We'll try to get others to do it to make us feel better, but it doesn't change anything. We know we've sinned. We know it in our heart. And we know that there's nothing that we can do about it. Quite frankly, the only thing that we can do about it is pray, go to the Lord and confess, and, and ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God. And he, he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. Oh, they hid from him because they knew that he had done, they had done the wrong thing. But you can't fool God. 
God called to the man and said, where are you? And the man answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Well, this is where God or the man has eaten from the tree and now knows the difference between good and evil. Because you see, before he sent, sinned, he was free. But now that he has sinned, he is burdened. His, his heart is burdened by his sin. Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And the man said, the woman put it here with, uh, with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Now, that sounds kind of typical of men. They blame it on somebody else. If they can, they'll blame it on their wife. That's a mistake. I can tell you now, that's a mistake. But first thing he did was try to blame somebody. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, oh, it wasn't me. It was the serpent. He deceived me, and I ate it. So everybody's trying to blame somebody else. But down deep, they know they can't. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, caused, uh, uh, cursed, are you above all livestock and all of the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. So, that kind of says, it does say, that the snake had legs, and, and he was punished for what he did, so that he had to crawl on the earth. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, and will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. So, that we're going to be punished. And the snake would continually, the snake, Satan, continually try to pull man back down. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Well, I don't know that that's true, but that's what the Bible says. And the man should be the leader of the house. And if he's not, then he's not fulfilling his duty as a man, according to the Lord. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all of the days of your life. Meaning he'll have to work now. When he was in the garden, he didn't have to worry about it. He could just walk up and eat the fruit. He was only forbidden to eat one and he ate it, so now he must work. He will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, until he dies. So it says, for dust you are, and dust you will return. So what really was a wonderful thing for Adam, now it is going to result in death. He will now have to die. You see, before this, God had given Adam and Eve perfect genetics. How do we know that? Well, the first generations lived at least a, hundred, a thousand years. They had genetics that could probably uh, last through eternity. But each time they sinned, those genetics were degraded. 
Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all living. You know, I mentioned earlier, I remember, or we've, just to be honest, if you go and try to look up Adam and Eve in the uh, uh, Wikipedia, you find two kinds of things. One is, uh, they say, when you ask for Adam and Eve, it says that it was an ancient myth. And also, if you continue to look, you'll find all you'll find is adult uh, movie stores because it's been so distorted. But it but it caused the fall of man. But even though they say that Adam and Eve was just a myth, Genesis have found that all females have a single person, Eve, who uh, started the line. There's one mother and one father, and all the genetics lead back to them. It wasn't different groups of people. There is a genesis for all people. The Lord God uh, made garments of skin for Adam and Eve and he clothed them. And the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat uh, and live forever. No more will he live forever. So the Lord banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he, he placed on the east side uh, Sarabah, who, were, who would guard Eden and uh, guard the tree of life. Well, this concludes uh, the study of this chapter. So you know that that's why People talk about the fall of man from Adam and Eve, who in fact were uh, perfect genetically, but now cannot, they have to die. We all have to die. And that's because of what Adam and Eve had done. Well, that's the, la that's, uh, the end of this chapter. We will meet again next week. Thank you so much for everything, and God bless you.